How y'all doing? Dawn back here again, and it's time to take our error handling and go to the next level. Mm. So, and as you see from this blog post, in Go version 1.13, they added some extra functionality with the uh, errors package that's in Go. It's a, it's a very simple change, uh, but it actually has uh, very interesting applications with uh, depending on how you structure your Go code. And it addresses a particular issue, which is if you've been using Go for any amount of time, and you may notice that if you have these like nested nested function calls, right? And say somewhere deep down, it may return an error. Well, further up that call stack, you may have other function calls that they themselves say they return errors. And what happens is, is you basically have this this kind of this trend of just constantly chucking the error back up the call stack until it's finally actually addressed. And maybe as it's tossed up, it kind of attaches some additional information, but it's kind of kind of handled in a clumsy way. Well, these changes, at least from what I can tell, specifically address that. So what they added here was, let me get down here, there's this concept of wrapping error. Now. What this means is, as it points out, you can have an error that has embedded in it another error. And what this means is, is you basically have uh, these, uh, as the vernacular, I believe it uses error chains. Uh, I call them like error, error stacks. That kind of makes more sense to me. And they make use of this new uh, method that some new functions in the errors package will look for called unwrap. And this is the signature for it, which is, it's just called unwrap, takes no arguments, and returns a something of type error. And there's two new functions in the errors package that make use of this uh, functionality. Uh, one's called is and one's called as. And um, what is does is if you have, excuse me, let's say you have uh, a three level deep error wrapping chain, if that makes sense. So you have, a top level error that wraps a middle level error that wraps a bottom level error, something like that. And you are wondering if in that chain somewhere there is, uh, let's say you want to know whether that chain has the, the middle level error. Well, you can make use of this, the, the is function here where you say, I'm checking if, uh, if the error that I have matches this type of error. And if it does, it returns true. If it doesn't, it returns false. Um, this would be uh, the equivalent, I believe it even says down here. Um, in the simplest case, errors.is function behaves like a comparison to a sentinel error. So this is basically be kind of like you saying like, if error equals some other variable that's an error, something like that. And errors.as behaves like a type assertion. Uh, so what the way that as works is you see it's declaring a variable of a certain error type or a type that you can assume implements the error interface and you're calling as with the error that you got as the first argument and then a, a pointer to the um, the error that you want to uh, put the error you want in that makes sense and what it'll do is it will cursively keep calling unwrap on all of those errors until it either gets to one that doesn't have unwrap or it actually finds the type of error you're looking for. If it does, it puts the error in here so that you can access it within this, this block here. So enough blabbering about it. Let me actually show you an example. So you'll see here, I have, let me go back up top. I have three error types defined here. And just, just to make them very clear what they are, they're called error top, error middle, and error bottom. And you'll see that error top and error middle have a message property, which is just the error message. And then you'll notice that both of these have a error property on it. And error top has a mid and error middle has a bottom. And you'll also notice that they both implement the error interface, which is that error function. But they also have that unwrap function. And what they do is they return the error that they are, they, the embedded error they have. And middle has this as well. But when we get to the bottom error, you'll notice it doesn't implement unwrap because it's not meant to. 
this is mimicking like a very bottom level error that you would normally see in a call stack. So let's say for example, you have a service that's interacting with a, like a SQL database or something. Uh, this would be the error return from say, interacting with that SQL package, that, that generic SQL interface, such as a, like a error, no rows, that's get returned when you run a query and don't get any rows back. It doesn't wrap anything, but you would maybe wrap that error in a higher level error to uh, do something with it to maybe add some additional information. So if I go to this main, my main function here, I have created an instance of each one of these. You have my bottom error, which has this message that just says, I'm, a I'm the bottom error. And then middle has its own message, uh, but also has, I'm passing in the bottom error so that it's embedded in it. And then I have the top error, which has the middle error embedded in it. So let's, let's just do some things. So um, I have this error chain now, right? Top wraps mid, mid wraps bottom. So let's say I want to find out whether this error chain actually has the, um, the, mid, the mid error in it, okay? So I'm gonna say um, if errors.is, I'm gonna pass in the top level error and I say mid. And I'm just gonna say if that's true, I'm gonna do log.print line. Um, we have a middle error, something like that. So I'm through this. I'm going to run this, and presumably I should get. You see, we have a middle error. So what it's doing is what is is doing is. I pass in this top level error. It, took, it checks and goes, hey, uh, this error is not the error you're looking for, but it has an unwrap method defined on it. Call unwrap on it, and then let's check the error that we got from it. So it runs it, and then it gets the middle error. It goes, is this the error we're looking for? Ah, it is, so it's true. Now, if this had been not what it was looking for, it would have checked to see if mid had the unwrap method on it. If it did, it would have called unwrap to get that error. And again, it could, this continues until either uh, it gets to an error that uh, has does not have the unwrap method on it, or it just doesn't get like it gets like nil back or something. So like when it would get to this one, if this didn't match, it would just say false because the bottom error does not have unwrap call uh, defined on it. It just it, it has meaning it has it's signaling it has no error embedded within it. Uh, so let's um let's let's try an example where this would return false. So if I do errors dot is and let's say we switch this now, we're passing in the middle error, and I'm asking is this a top level error? But maybe I let's let's do a uh, we're gonna do uh, if we're gonna do not if that's not that that uh, the log print line uh, this is not a top level error. And we're going to run that. And you see, this is not a top level error. And that's because since we're starting with the mid level error, within that chain, the only thing it's going to go to is the bottom level. Uh, the, the, mid, uh, the mid level error basically has no understanding that it's being wrapped, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's only starting from whatever error you pass in is the, is the, chain, is the top of the chain and keeps going until it doesn't get anything else. So within this context, it would go, no, this, is, this, this chain does not have this error you're looking for. Uh, so another way to do this would be, what about the as thing? Say that we have our, our top, our entire chain, but we, we specifically want the check to say we have that bottom level uh, error to do something with it. So I'm going to do, um, this is what I'm calling new bot. Oh, wait, var new bot is of type error bottom like that. And I'm gonna do um, what would that be? Uh, if yeah, I think that's right. It's if errors dot as uh, top and error bottom. Oops, it's the wrong thing. This error bottom like that uh, what that should do is now within this context 
error bottom will be have will, will have been set to that bottom error that bottom error in in the chain so i'm going to do log dot print line and i'm just going to say a uh, found bottom level error and i'm going to print out a new bot or wait hold on i made a boo boo it's not not the actual type name you big dummy it's a new bot like that i think i should be right uh, run this yep so you see found bottom level error i am the bottom error so what it did was when it went through this chain and found that hey the error that you're looking for is actually in this chain it's basically sets this variable to the value of that error in that chain and then low out, basically it's available in this context so one last thing you can do now with these new uh like the whole error wrapping thing is they added some additional functionality with um with printf in the fmt package there is an extra verb now of of w and what w does is if you pass in an error it will expand out the entire error chain which looks kind of interesting so let's actually see what that looks like so if i do um i'm gonna do log Actually, I'm just going to do fmt.printf. I say my error chain, and I do w percent w, and I pass in that top level chain. If I let me put in a new line so it doesn't look all garbage. Now, if I run this, you're going to see it starting up from the top. It expands out the entire error chain, which is interesting because that allows you to kind of easily like. Bleh, vomit out the entire like entirety of all the details of your error chain. Last other thing you can do is uh, when you do the the uh, error f function from FM, fmt that returns like a formatted string as an error. If you make use of that uh, w verb, it actually returns an error that you can use in the um, the is and the as functions. So there's an example of that if I say I'm gonna say new bot equals uh, error bottom uh this is a new bottom error and i'm going to say new new error uh equals uh, fmt error or i can't type error f i'll say uh this is another error i say percent w and i pass in new bot like that so now what I can do is, even though I didn't like uh, return an error that I specifically created that has a specific implementation of unwrap on it, what I can do now I can do is if errors dot is new error and new bot like this, this should go into the block, and I'm going to say log dot print line uh this has a bottom error in it like that and if i run this oops silly boy does that make boo c2 oh silly okay yep there we go if you run this and you see this has a bottom error in it so even though this did not return like a, a custom type that had that that's implemented as error and unwrap, it still returned an error that had a wrapped error in it that you could unwrap and use in these new uh, these new error wrapping functionality. Uh, that's all I got for you today. Uh, this new this feature is interesting. Uh, I haven't worked on a Go project where I have where I, I think I've really had this problem of these like super deeply nested uh, error chains that would really be useful for this. But I can imagine if you have a rather large project that has maybe some fairly deeply nested call stacks, this could be super super useful for getting some very well structured information about your errors. Uh, I'm not real sure. Uh, you should all let me you should let me whether you're actually whether you think this feature is interesting whether you plan on using it or whether you are using it just let me know in the comments down below i'm curious to hear about what y'all are going to do um with that y'all come on back now and i'll see you next time